Hey, in this adventure, I respond to a Fortnite video as well as other concerns about the dark side. You don't know the power of the dark side. Many people come out saying, hey, that's not how it was designed. That's not the tire design for that realm. That's not, that's not. And those are valid arguments. And if that's you, then, then don't do it. But also, don't force other people to not do it because uh, you're afraid or because you don't think or whatever it is. Uh, a lot of us out here on the dark side, we like modifying. We like hot rod. And sometimes those things aren't as per design. Uh, another common concern is dealing with the insurance. Your insurance won't cover you in an accident. Well, that's been debunked. We've had many people on the forum over the years, including people who were in the insurance industry themselves, who said the insurance company could care less if you put a car tire on your bike. The only thing they care about is that the tire is DOT certified. What gets me about most critics is they don't have personal experience. If you have fear over it, don't do it. But don't push your fear on other people who are thinking about it. Fort 9 is an exception. Uh, Ryan put a car tire on a BMW GS700. His video received over three and a half million views and this is my response to some of it. I'll stop here to clarify. I am talking about Ryan with Fort 9 and Fort 9 is a uh, motorcycle accessory and gear online store. Uh, the videos they produce, especially with Ryan, are phenomenal. Uh, I really like what they're doing. Uh, I just don't always agree. And to me, the first real issue here is they picked a light bike uh, to use his car tire on. Switching to a car tire easily doubles the load capacity. On My Little Pony, I'd be fine either way, but consider a gold wing. Friction force between rubber and pavement is damn near described by F equals mu N. N has to do with how many Timbits you and your bike ate for breakfast. Mu has to do with how sticky your rubber is. The surface area of the contact patch Oh, well, it has nothing to do with it. Uh, in this formula, N is, we'll say, relatively small because it's a light bike. But let's think about it on a heavy bike. Now, I did find that the tire I'm using on my Goldwing is basically the same tire they use on a 2010 Mini Cooper. Now, Mini Cooper weighs around 2,500 pounds and it has four tires. So I just say, hey, uh, divide by four is about 625, which is about 300 less than what my motorcycle weighs total. So I divide my motorcycle weight in half. You get about 460 pounds, which is about 160 pounds lighter uh, than what the tire sees. Now, I'll call that similar, especially when I have the motorcycle loaded down doing some touring. Just for completion, uh, the tire load rating is 1,201 pounds. Now, this all sounds good. I can't tell you everything that it means. One day I might dig deeper. But what I can tell you is I made a mistake in a curve one day, and uh, the tire held until I started scraping metal. Oh. Oh. Well, that didn't work so well. Yeah, and this get off was no more affected by the tire than it was the gremlin bell, uh, which didn't survive, by the way. All this to say, I agree with Ryan. Light bikes and car tires, not the best combination. So, the bright side of the dark side is that it does work. Unbelievable, but after the first 10 minutes, I could hardly feel the difference. Notice what he said there? After 10 minutes, he couldn't really tell the difference. And he's on a small bike. Couldn't tell the difference. Think about that, short time to adjust on a bike that's not optimal for this choice. And there are plenty of people out there with light bikes, dark siding, nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying a large bike, it's a great option. The dark side of the dark side is that you're more likely to see spontaneous uninstallation and the handling is comparatively garbage. I love this term, spontaneous uninstallation. And I'll agree with them here that uh, it is more likely on a car tire to have spontaneous uninstallation, but it's never happened. I even had a flat on a car tire on my motorcycle going down the road, 45, 55 miles an hour. The tire stayed on there. The bead did not release. Now I'll admit the bead surface concern was what kept me from dark siding, but the TSA, the Traffic Safety Administration, has no documented cases of this ever happening. In my experience, changing uh, the car tire on the motorcycle rim, uh, the bead doesn't come off all that easy. Now he said poor handling, but at the same time he said after 10 minutes he didn't notice. Well, which is it, Ryan? I can agree that I probably do hold a, a curve with a little more force than others, but 
on a big bike, we're kind of doing that anyway. So the car tire, I just don't notice the difference. Kind of like Ryan, didn't notice the difference. I will say the one thing that I do believe the car tire is not good for on the motorcycle is that's off-roading. I have minor experience with the off-roading, mainly um, bumpy dirt roads and such. I don't like it. I do feel like on those surfaces, the tire does try to straighten you up when you're trying to do all kind of wonky angles. Uh, so that's something to think about if you're planning on doing a lot of off-roading, maybe it's not, but also I don't have that much experience, so I can't say for sure that's what's the problem. It could just be me. We're motorcyclists, masters of measured risk. We should all be able to weigh up which of these things are more important to us. Some people care enough about wind in the face to risk wearing a half helmet. All of us care enough about riding to risk doing it in the first place. The great mystery of the dark side is that it should be no mystery that some of us are happy to risk doing it. Let it go. Yup, we're out here doing it. I have over 50,000 miles riding dark side on the gold wing and... I'm never going back! Well said, brother cowboy. Well said. Well, this is Redbeard. Until my next adventure, see you on the road.